Hey, I'm Dan Whitaker. Uh, I'm here today to analyse the golf swing of Steve Stricker. Um, Steve's just come off winning his third John Deere Classic, um, three years in a row, um, and he's seen as being one of the most consistent performers on tour. Um, he swings the club um, very in sync. Um, today I'm going to have a look at uh, what makes his swing so repeatable, um, but also some of the reasons why he maybe doesn't have as much uh, distance as some of the other guys. Um, relative to be able to create as much speed as they do. Now, what we tend to find is um, Steve's very, very upright at address, and rather than the hands being low down like a lot of the guys tend to be these days, he has his wrist a little bit arched. Um, the refraction's over here with the driver, but they're very much so seen here with the iron from uh, down the line. Let's just zoom this out a little. <coughs> we'll see that the wrists are actually in this slight arched position here. So from there, it's much more difficult to set the golf club correctly in the back so you can get a um, much left wrist cut, but much easier to keep the correlation between the hands and club going back. What this tends to do, though, is as you take it back, it tends to make the arms and shoulders raise a little in that first move because there's quite a lot of tension in the club. It can be seen here with the driver here on the 11th tee at Augusta from 09. We see that hands just move away a touch there now he starts to turn but what he does is he does a great job of keeping the triangle form between the <coughs> arms and the upper body completely in one piece he keeps them together all the way to the top here okay now from this view it looks like he's got quite a lot of set but when we have a look from the front view in a moment particularly the rear view we'll notice that he's not actually got that much wrist set and cock in the club <coughs> One of the big things we too see at the top here, though, is you see a very passive or neutral club face. It's um, neutral in terms of it's completely lined up with um, the left arm. And one thing to note is that Steve's arm plane um, or arm swing is much uh, shallower than it was some years back. It now matches up to his body rotation, whereas in the past it was a little bit steeper. Now, when we see, have a look at this from the front view right here, what we're going to see is. We're going to see how well this triangle stays in one piece going back, but what we're going to see is as he gets near the top, how there's very little set in the golf club. So the angle form between the shaft here and the left arm there is not even reaching 90 degrees. You can see there it's at 106. So this is telling us that his levers aren't fully set at all at the top. So as he's going to come through this, he's not going to be able to create as much power and definitely not going to create any la as much lag he's not got the golf club set anywhere near as much as a lot of the other guys do these days on tour. When we have a look at this from the rear view, we've got two of it from the rear. This first one, which we'll see from great setup angles, we'll see how, because he doesn't particularly turn that deep, he's more of an angle type pivot, the right hip gets up a bit higher on him. So rather than the hips turning back more level, they t he gets them more angular. One of the things that this does is because he doesn't load the wrists that much, he gets the elbow a, l a little bit more behind him right here. But he's able to counteract the problem of having this, hip, this elbow slightly behind him by not having the golf club set anywhere near as much at the top. If he had um, this fully loaded at the top, this elbow would be collapsed and there'd be no space. But what he does is he manages to keep the arms and the body beautifully in sync together. Most people, if they had this elbow here and then had the golf club set in this kind of region, which we're just going to draw in now, somewhere there, which would be a lot more loaded, the club would then set in more in the downs when creating some lag. Well, what we see Steve do is he has the angles here at the top, and he just maintains these angles. He's not generating any lag, but he's holding the angles, and we can still see right here, even from the rear view, that he's hitting this with shaft lean right there. So what he does is, once he's made the backswing pivot in sync, he then goes over the front foot, and then over the front pivot point, and then just continues to unwind. Everything's very kind of stiff-wristed and letting the pivot drive the motion. So the arms are simply following the action of the body. We see it from this one here. Again, from this view, we can see quite clearly how this right hip works up but how well he's managed to keep the arms and the body completely in sync to one another. In other words, when this upper body stops turning 
at the exact same motion there the hands and the hands arms and clubs stop moving now from there he's able to then make this move over the front pivot point and unwind and keep the arms in front of the body at all, at all times which gives him tremendous accuracy this is highlighted here in this down the line one of him at Augusta now what we see is we know that this is the original shaft plane right here see the hands work up slightly then at the top the left arm is parallel to the original shaft plane with the club face parallel to it and goes over the front pivot point and now he's delivering the club back perfectly to that same position so this is telling us that the, he has got the club and the arms beautifully in sync to one another one other thing that he does tremendously well since he gets that right elbow a little behind him in the backswing because it isn't so loaded he's able to then keep it in front of him coming down and we don't particularly see it chasing on away through the impact zone right here and it allows him to just unwind around and the club comes out of the body on the same angle that the shaft was on at address so we can see that he's got the arms the body and the club beautifully synced to one another and uh, clearly from here there's more than one way to skin a cat you know and um, we've got the club working beautifully around on the art following the body so this is a pivot driven action but without that much set from the wrists okay and we are not getting the golf club as loaded as some others which is never going to give him the power but it's going to give him unbelievable accuracy and it's also going to make him very very consistent which is what we've seen over the last few years now one element of Steve's game which um, is tremendous is wedge play now what we tend to see here is the the blend of the arms the body and the club what sets him apart from 125 yards in um, as he's unbelievably accurate and I believe leads the tour in stats this and then around the greens playing very passive hands uh, is able to monitor the um, speed of the delivery of the club head via his pivot and he's also able to then monitor the pressure just by um, the angle and the pressure from the right hand now what we'll see is, is he takes it back here the arms the body and the club are so beautifully synced to one another the arms have stayed in front there's not a lot of set in it so for, for him there's never going to be a problem like a Garcia sometimes who has had a problem with his pitching on distance control where he's perhaps set the golf club very aggressively we see here with Steve this angle is not even 90 degrees right here between the left arm and the shaft now because there's not as much angle there what we'll see is on the way down he is just able to hold these and, and just pivot and the arms are following the pivoting action of the body and we see how tremendously well he holds the angle in the right wrist so we'd see that the right elbow is still on the hip the right wrist is there still fully behind the blow at impact right here so it with shaft lean but then as we bring him through from here we will see that at the finish point getting through to the finish the angle is still held in that right wrist and those arms are following the pivoting motion of the body and the center point of the hands is in line with the sternum exactly the same as it was in line with the sternum at halfway back so this is telling us that the arms and the body and the club are so beautifully synced to one another and this is um, always highlighted in people who are great wedge players that the body the hands and the club are always moving at the same rate to one another you know we will see how this unwind is happening and the body is controlling the club head which is then controlling the speed giving him consistency in terms of angle of attack pressure into the club head consistency in the loft consistency in the strike so therefore he's able to control the distance and the trajectory very easily now when we have a look at Steve here he's actually something around the greens but we can see you know it's a, it's a short pitch stroke chip shot but we see here how his arms body and club are so synced to one another going back here and he just pivots through and the club 
is simply following him. Now this is quite interesting to look at how his pitching game mirrors what's going on on his long game. And we see here how the arms, the body and the glove are so synced to one another and the uh, body pivot is controlling the speed. When we have a look at this comparable to his full swing, we will we'll notice that they're both coming through at exactly the same kind of motion. It's very, very synced up. We have a look here how you know to there it's the same motion as the pitch shot very little wrist set but on the way through we will see here I was getting tremendous shuffling but the arms and the body are very synced in other words the center point of the hands is in line with the sternum here okay this is almost a, a, a full swing version of Hunter Mahan doing the wide to wide drill with very little wrist set or having the impact ball between the arms and keeping the arms the body and the club together at all points during the swing only now at the finish does it fold down okay the reason for Steve's high finish right at the end there is a byproduct of him not just having that much acceleration around but instead using the pivot in a slightly different manner yes it's going around but it's not as aggressively around with the rotational speed and therefore having the angle to allow it to release around he therefore he keeps it much more in front of him but without as much set we can clearly see that um, he's going to have a lot of longevity with his swing. Um, and we can see why he's a prolific winner um, and is always very high on the money list and in the world rankings because he's able to transfer this golf full swing into his um, wedge game, which then leads to unerring accuracy but also makes him deadly from 100 yards in. So. We see that um, someone like Phil Mickelson, who's very handy in the long game, is handy in the short game, as it fits together the short game and the long game match one another. So too do we see this in Steve's game, where we see his long game and short game match one another. I do hope you've enjoyed my analysis here of um, Steve's swing. Um, if you want to contact me, you can at dan at danwhitakergolf.com, or you can visit my website danwhitakergolf.com Thanks a lot for uh, watching the analysis and I'll speak to you again soon.